Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to record a video today about camcorders and why I believe that even in the year 2022, camcorders are still actually pretty solid purchases. First thing I wanna say before going further is that I usually don't make YouTube videos if I see that somebody else on YouTube has covered a topic before. Um, I figure what's the point in duplicating. So before I started recording this video, I did look up on YouTube and I saw there, there, have, there are a few people um, who have recorded videos about why they choose to use a camcorder over something like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So um, those videos though, they really gave me a lot of encouragement and I didn't know the first thing to say is that you know, this process for me of uh, starting a YouTube channel, running a YouTube channel, is really a uh, process that I'm basically kind of open sourcing my voyage. That's why I post videos about pretty much every topic and I've mentioned before that in time, I'm going to probably start up a couple, one or perhaps more uh, YouTube channels, uh, you know, more tightly focused on some of my main interests, uh, like technology for instance. Um, but up to now, it's been pretty much me just open sourcing my journey with video. So I'm by no means an expert, um, but I have learned enough in the last few years uh, to know that there are still some reasons why camcorders are actually decent. And uh, I want to add to the commentary a little bit uh, with my, my reasons. First thing to say about camcorders. Now I've taken out, my wife owns this uh, camera, which is a mirrorless camera. It's a Sony Alpha 6000. And I looked up the uh, RRP, the recommended retail price in the US. At the moment, this uh, mirrorless camera sells for about $700. Now when I was looking to start uh, video, and that was about three years ago, I said, well, I need a camera. I'm not gonna just shoot stuff on my phone. And it is interesting to me that I never actually even thought about purchasing anything other than a camcorder. What I decided to buy was this a Canon Vixia HF R800, which is really kind of at the entry level of Canon's uh, spectrum. Now, it surprised me later that when I went on to YouTube and I started looking for a best YouTube camera, all I saw really was recommendations for uh, mirrorless or DSLR cameras. Now, the advantages that I personally got from this is for your $400, this is the RRP at the moment of the Vixia HF R800, I went for this particular camcorder because it was the cheapest camcorder I could buy that had an external audio port. It's got a 3.5 millimeter jack here, and that means that you can basically work with almost any microphones. You can buy yourself a shotgun mic or a lavalier microphone, and uh, you can use it with the camcorder. Now, by comparison, when I was playing around with my uh, wife's mirrorless camera here, this Sony model, uh, you can get a couple of mics that'll play that'll connect to the uh, to the hot shoe over here, but it just kind of really surprises me that you can spend seven hundred dollars on a, a piece of camera gear and you won't even get those basic accessorization ports. Now there was one limitation on this Vixia in that it didn't have a cold shoe, and that is why a couple of weeks ago I decided to double down on my uh, camcorder voyage and I picked up this. Canon XA40 camcorder. This is a um, entry level professional camcorder and this really takes it a little bit uh, further in terms of ports. You do get your, uh, your, your shoe attachment, you get a top handle and it's got um, XLR ports here uh, which put out phantom power for uh, professional audio. So I think of a few advantages and disadvantages of going with a camcorder versus something like this uh, Sony product. The first thing, the first real main difference about camcorders, I guess, is that uh, the type of camcorders we're looking at, as opposed to cinema cameras, which is a different market or fixed lens. So you get a lens and that's kind of fixed in place. It's part of the form factor of the camcorder. Now that doesn't mean, and I think that some people think this, that you're stuck with exactly um, that lens. You can buy um, aftermarket attachments, at least for the Vixia and for this, wide that'll, that'll give you wide angles you can get telephoto attachments as well um, you can get macro lens filters you can get of course nd filters you can get cpl filters so there is actually a market there's stuff you can do with the lens uh, you just don't have as much versatility as a non-fixed lens uh, camera that you can buy lenses which have very much different vibes and feels so it was an interesting experience i was recently editing uh, together a video uh, shot from two cameras I shot with a camcorder and my friend Marcus James uh, who uh, says he watches my YouTube videos this is his real test shot footage with a mirrorless and when I looked at the two side by side in my editing tool uh, the, the footage my friend shot was the 
um, was the mirrorless was a lot more cinematic. It had that kind of, it was a lot vibier. And I can see why people really like it, especially when you're looking for stuff like bokeh, the blurry background. But the footage I got from my camcorder, I was also happy with in a very different way. It just felt very solid to me. It wasn't kind of, you know, I was shooting on automatic mode and it just came out really uh, decent. It wasn't, uh, nothing was wrong with it. As I said, it wasn't maybe as um, impressive looking visually, but it was like decent footage. So if you're just looking for video capture, something that will do um, a really, really good job and be a workhorse at that tool, I think that's a reason why camcorders are still, still have a following. The second reason, and this is kind of why I mentioned uh, the cameras I bought, is accessorization. And that's where I came to the conclusion that I was spending a lot of time and effort that was getting in the way of actually going out and shooting in terms of getting stuff rigged up, putting lights on, getting microphones on. When you start with a form factor like this, there's two things. Firstly, shooting with uh, this kind of a, a camera, a professional camcorder with the classic top handle look, it's really, really satisfying. The fact that it's heavier is actually kind of a feature. It's not, you know, they don't just throw in lead plates here uh, to make it heavier, but that little bit of added weight really helps with stability when you're shooting handheld. So if you compare that to shooting with a, a mirrorless and you know, there are ways to stabilize it, like using the, uh, using the necktie a little bit and stuff like that, but that form factor for video doesn't have to be that bulky and can also be actually a big advantage. In terms of accessorization, adding things on, when, you have a, when you're starting with a rig like this, you, know, you just need to attach a shotgun and add a shotgun mount and put it on, you can keep it on. Some uh, pro camcorders actually have built in lights and uh, shotgun microphones that are actually part of the design. They're physically attached and they're not removable, so that's another option. Versus starting with something like a DSLR or mirrorless that basically is a photography camera. And if you want to do stuff like adding lights and adding microphones, you need to rig around this. You need to use brackets and adapters, etc., cetera, um, in, order to, in order to get yourself those accessories. So I think that's what, that is basically why camcorders remain really popular with ENG. They're the standard for electronic news gathering, uh, for TV stations, for documentarians. Um, you know, for people who are operating that kind of fast moving run and gun environment, and some people think, well, that's the only use nowadays for camcorders, but I think there's a lot of people who find run and gun really useful. All I have to do, I can be operating in five seconds, turn on the power, open the lens, run the camera uh, in automatic mode. That was three seconds and we're up and going and I can have everything pre-rigged. Um, so I think that, you know, if you are looking to do, the conclusion I've come to is if you're looking to do really uh, cinematic work, um, you know, in terms of getting, as I said, bokeh and playing around with different lenses, then a DSLR or mirrorless is probably a better option. If you're more interested in having something that just does plain, basic footage for your documentary, the footage doesn't have to be maybe super cinematic, but it's really, really reliable, and you don't want to be running into stuff like uh, file capture size limits, um, and you want to have something first and foremost that you can just pop out of your camera bag and it's going to be good to go. And you know, as I just timed myself five seconds, uh, I was up and running. And then I think camcorders are still very valid options. There still is a market for camcorders, but the thing that is uh, jumps out to me is how much less vibrant the market is. So when, I, when you're looking at the camcorder market for anybody thinking about buying one of these, one thing I did notice is you kind of have these really, really basic consumer cameras. Then you've got the action cameras that are better for vlogging. So if you want to do vlogging with a camcorder, you should probably look for a uh, vlogging or an action camera. And the difference is that that lens, the fixed lens on that camera uh, would have a really good wide lens option designed to shoot you uh, from a range like this and not be super in your face, which is when I try to vlog uh, on the Vixia, this just doesn't really work well for, uh, for vlogging, at least not without the, um, the wide angle lens aftermarket attachment, then it becomes kind of chunky. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I have to say about why I've chosen to go down the camcorder route. I would say this, and that's that having just bought this, I, th I think it's the most amazing piece of gear I've owned to date. And that probably includes other uh, technology categories. Um, having these XLR ports available to me on something I carry around with me means that I can basically use, and given the fact that they're phantom powered, I can use any microphone. There's no limits now in terms of what I can shoot with. Uh, when I have a, a, a gear like this and you know versus something of this nature which shoots kind of more visually impressive footage but my first question is well if I want to use a lav mic and it's 3.5 mils 
this thing that I can't work with it and you know where would I put a light is there an extra shoe I have to start thinking about accessorization and uh, for someone like me who's I guess kind of a bit technically minded that ultimately becomes a distraction from simply storytelling and gathering footage which is what it's kind of it's all about at the end of the day personally I my needs are served better by something like this they can just put into a backpack put into a camera bag take out start shooting and if I look like a uh, soccer mom or a uh, soccer dad then uh, so be it uh, I prefer these guys so that's my spiel on uh, why I've chosen to invest money in uh, owning camcorders rather than owning uh, um, DSLR and mirrorless I know a lot of people really like the other types and some people even use cinematic cameras for stuff like YouTube which is again a separate uh, product category um, as a sort of um, early stage or rookie videographer the intention here isn't to argue with you. There are people who will know a hundred times more um, about uh, cameras than me uh, who might watch this video. And I just want to say, I just wanted to put my opinion out and uh, throw my hat in with the ring, throw my hat into the ring of the uh, declining but passionate group of camcorder fans that are still very much uh, out there. And there are still manufacturers like Canon, Panasonic, JVC uh, making camcorders both in the consumer market prosumer market and of course then you also have the professional and ENG market. Um, I won't go on any further uh, if you're also a camcorder fan and you're also uh, resisting the uh, the huge trend towards DSLR and mirrorless feel free to leave me a, a comment we encourage one another. Uh, people who are into camcorders just want to quickly mention there is a subreddit for camcorders there are Facebook groups uh, if you want to connect with other people who are into camcorders uh, there is definitely good online community if you find that helpful. I personally find the Canon community super helpful. Uh, the odd time I have a question I can't figure out myself or with the instruction manual I post there. Sometimes they help other people and uh, it's really great. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, if you wanna get more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and thank you for watching.